Today I'm here with Henry Brand, who you may have previously known as the 2019 World Champion, uh, but you can also now know him as the 2023 Milwaukee Champion. Henry, how are you doing? Too bad. Milwaukee, not quite the uh, the entire world, but it's it's now a more <laughs> recent title. It's gone good. Yeah, yeah. Um, interesting that what what you said you said something on Twitter after winning about what it feels like to win a large event, and I mm. thought that was really interesting you because really uh, you won world champ. Obviously, you're a world champion, right? Um, so in quality of tournament, it doesn't really get any bigger than that but day two of worlds is like a hundred people uh and uh the milwaukee yeah. regionals was like 1200 people or something so yeah. what was that uh just jumping right in like what was that scale difference like so this was probably only like the second or third tournament of that size you've played yeah i think so so i i've played in naic before um but I've never played in a four-digit... Per- oh, maybe NAIC was. Yeah, NAIC um, 2019 but, was a little over a 1,000, somewhere yeah. over a 1,000. Okay, so it's definitely the largest I've played in still, this one. But it's just different. So like you said, like about the World Championships, technically, if you count like the whole season, you are competing against like a ton of people. But the actual tournament itself, not necessarily in terms of like difficulty, but just the amount of rounds you play is a lot different. And at least personally, like I don't get that much experience playing long day two tournaments, at least back in Australia. So I'm always a little bit concerned about, you know, my stamina and longevity. And and I feel like you have less room to to get, uh, I guess, you can't really make any mistakes when you have such a long tournament because you're going to get unlucky at some point and probably lose to that. So you don't really have any margin for error as such. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was super yeah, interesting. Yeah, I thought that was super interesting. So um, you took Guard of REX to this event. Now, uh, Guard of REX, people have been a little back and forth on that in this format, uh, mostly because of the Lost Zone box matchups. Um, now, so before we actually talk about your deck, Gardevoir, how do you quantify Lost Zone when you're testing against it or metagaming? Because realistically, Lost mm-hmm. Zone box is, is the archetype, right? But... Mm -hmm. there could be like five different decks that go into that archetype there's a lot of variables um when you're kind of guessing what cards will people put in there will they be playing giratina v star gujar v star uh kyogre uh sky seal Mm -hmm. stone so um do you kind of look at it as one conglomerate or do you think about the the small card inclusions um they're all kind of similar in that the main culprit for you is Sableye. Mm -hmm. So no matter what they're playing, really, you just need to try and have a game plan against Sableye. And it does change, obviously. Like, you do have to play differently against each one, but the same general thing applies of, like, well, if you can handle Sableye, you know, that's the main thing. Um, And I mean, like, other Lost Zone decks, like, if they put down a Gudra, like, I'm just turning my brain off and I'm going to sign the slip as a win, you know, in, like, 20 minutes. So, um, (laughs) but, the like, the Lost Zone decks in terms of Kyogre were the most popular ones. Um, And I mean, you pretty much just have to play the same against them. The one that is slightly different is when they play like Zamazenta, Mm -hmm. the basic Zamazenta, but then that's different. So you just can play it a bit slower because they can't get to save lives quickly, but they have a better answer to your Zation um, when you just try and attack with that, which I'm sure we can talk about much more specifically, but that's like the main differences. So you got to get a read on that. Um, But they lose, you know, loosely, they're all kind of the similar thing they have. They threaten save line and you kind of go from there so when did you decide to play guard of rex for milwaukee um probably a while ago i said this to i said this to skazi on the stream and i said i said i'm not i'm always going to play now especially now um a deck that i like mm. and i really like guard of War. it's good fun i want to like i want to have fun playing pokemon and i think that because so you mentioned that guard of War is maybe dropped in popularity or it wasn't super respected And I mean, honestly, I think it's just because people can't play it properly. Uh, And the thing with Gardevoir is, I mean, obviously it's really tricky because you draw cards, you have like one-offs, you're a setup deck, but you have to manage like the prize map really important, like really carefully because you fall behind a lot. So you have to know like exactly how to throw like attackers at them and when, uh, and there's so much like minutia. Uh, But the big one as well is that, especially against Lost Zone, 
it's not a matchup where you can like think like, oh, I have this card, so it beats them, or like I definitely beat them, or you know, it goes the same way each time. Like, and you can't see usually the end of the game from the start of the game. And so when people can't see like a direct counter or a direct line, it's kind of more often considered bad. Um, but you have to play incrementally. So you have to kind of feel that like this is good in the grand scheme of things without like seeing it all the way to the end because there's so many different paths. That's why I think it's it's a really fun and good matchup to play. But yeah, you have to play like in small increments and hope that what you're doing is good and then try and get there at the end. Cool. So going into the event, um, did you consider Lost Zone Box to be your worst matchup or the matchup that you had to practice the most? Um, it's a good question. I played a two, three league challenges and a cup um, back in Melbourne before I left, and I played Gardevoir uh, at all of them, and I just kept debating it. Um, so I knew that it wasn't, like, favoured, but I also didn't think it was unfavoured like by very much at all like i felt that if you got into the game you were fine like there's some games where you prize mana feet and you just like lose but like there's um it is it is very close so i thought you know what and the other thing actually i feel like if i play better than my lost zone opponent i'm going to win most mm -hmm. of the time which is a really good thing to go into an 1100 person tournament with where you can like feel that you'll get rewarded in that sense um it's only it's very close when they play well but i think that the match i was most worried about I thought that they were all winnable. They were all very close and winnable. I think I was more worried about the matchup with myself. Um, and if I would, you know, if I would keep, you know, playing well and, and do all that. And it was a good spot for Gardevoir because people would, weren't respecting it. So mm -hmm. Mew had like cut cleansing gloves. Arcana had cut cleansing gloves, um, all of that. And I mean, if people can't play Gardevoir very well, when they test against it, they'll think that their deck is favored. So mm -hmm. you get a bit of an advantage there. Nice, nice. Yeah, so um, that kind of is like the mentality of playing a deck that people aren't ready for. Um, like mm -hmm. playing, you know, a rogue deck or a deck that you and your friends built. Um, it's kind of similar in that way because if they think that they can beat it but they just weren't playing against it, a, a good pilot or somebody playing it as well as it could be, reaching that ceiling, then it's almost like you're playing a surprise deck because they weren't ready yeah. for it to be as good as it is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, I had some nail biters, but I play, and a good example of this is I played against Xander Perot, and we had a close game. Like, he, he drew a bit uh, poorly, but he said he said to me, he's like, my earlier Gardevoir opponents did not play like this. <laughs> um, and he's like, and I smashed it. I was like, well, there you go. Um, so I had, to, I had to hear an earful about the Lost Zone matchup all weekend. Everyone would come up and be like, how are you beating Lost Zone? It's fine. I'm like, yeah. No, no. So, yeah. So, uh, you're attending Fresno this weekend, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, are we expecting uh, this to be another Guardy weekend? Um, if you want to beat me, you probably want to be able to beat Gardevoir. Let's okay. put it that way. <laughs> I like the deck. I'm not going to meta manipulate. I mean, there's, if I find something else interesting or I think there's a good play, then maybe I'll switch off it, but I enjoy it. I have fun at the moment. If the tournament was today, I'd be playing it, yeah. Sure, sure. And there's also um, there's also not a lot of... Um, I guess there's not a lot to invest into getting a new deck ready for Fresno when we're switching into NAIC so soon after. Um, yeah, yeah, that too. So in terms of NAIC... What what do you think changes? Not just for Guardi, but just on the off the top of your head, what are the main changes that happen? So I've done a lot of looking at like the Japanese results and the format. I always like have all the pages followed on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Um I think it's it's really interesting. So Gardevoir changes a ton. You have like Iono, you have reversal energy. Um but the big thing that happens is I think you have to drop Luminion. Now I'm not completely sure yet. But because of Spirit Tomb, a lot of people play Spirit Tombs to turn off basic V abilities against like Mew, obviously, but also against Lugia. If they can't use Luminion, they really struggle to set up. And so I think the value of Luminion drops a lot. Um, as, and in exchange, you get like the value of playing Iona because you can cut your Judge, you can cut your Roxanne, um, and then you get like two extra good draw supporters. So mm -hmm. that kind of offsets the Luminion. Um, 
you just have to lean into it a bit more. And you also have like reversal energy, which is big for baby Gardevoir. So now there's like probably not a big reason to play choice belt. Um, and obviously your last time matchup gets a bit better and like you have super odds. So like there goes Miriam and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of one for one replaced choice belt with reversal energy right away in my early testing. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, I, I cut Luminion. I didn't really cut Luminion because of the spirit tomb thing, because like, you know, a couple few weeks ago when I started building Paldea Evolved decks, I wasn't too sure how much people would want to put spirit tomb in their deck. I'm still not too sure how much people will want to put spirit tomb in their deck because as we know, like we can look at Japanese results and the Taiwan results and all of that all day, but that doesn't mean that the Western players are going to adapt. I mean, I feel Western players, mm. especially uh, North American players are very stubborn about putting in cards that they don't want to like start as their active pokemon or like cards that feel mm -hmm. like dead cards in certain matchups um okay. and so i i personally am not too sure about spirit tomb uh but mm -hmm. i felt like i didn't miss luminion and gardevoir because i wasn't playing one of 10 supporters anymore in Paldea of all format yeah. because now instead of okay i want to use judge early and i want to use roxanne late i'll just use iona wall game um yeah and so for me that's uh that's i i haven't missed luminion so far in my testing for that but it's like you say with without the all the one-off supporters and stuff i feel like almost god of gets a little bit more boring next format <laughs> it might like, in the terms of the supporters like the against <laughs> yeah i mean not just supporters but it feels like at the moment you're kind of like the underdog you know what i mean like all the matchups are even and you got to play really well and mm -hmm um but next one it's like gets the power level goes up and so i think you're gonna start seeing some more respect on it and you know, i guess you don't have to work as hard for um for your wins but uh in terms of other decks as well it's interesting to look at like chen pao like the backscalibur deck and like how arceus changes because arceus gets like like the current ones get obliterated by chen pao um provided they don't like path brick like which is pretty pretty reasonable to do um like they just take big knockouts but they pivot to playing flying pikachu the arceus decks mm -hmm. in japan is what i've seen yep so then it's kind of that push and pull and chen pao is very linear but it'll be interesting to see if anyone comes up with a really cool innovative list yeah yeah uh, you touched on a couple interesting things there so like um chi and pal um it could just be fault to me because i'm testing a chi and pal list that is not too linear um because like if chi and pal was just going to be she and pal backs caliber and nothing else i have no interest in playing it because that one yeah. it, it sounds boring it sounds like it loses a single prizers <laughs> like uh, like um but with um like the cross switcher cologne lost city lists i'm really really interested mm -hmm. in lost city i think lost city is just stupid good for paldea of all format because gardevoir mm -hmm. doesn't want to see lost city and lost zone doesn't want to see lost city most of the time um and you can find mm -hmm. a couple other decks that you know can actually recur their pokemon that don't want to get lost cityed um but yeah chi and pal i think it has if it has the options like the cross switcher cologne lost city kind of stuff with greninja you have the kyogre maybe articuno for paralyze i kind of like the deck like i think it's really cool but so far in playing it i don't love how it feels to play um like i thought mm. it was going to just beat arceus decks outright uh, to the point where, like, I almost didn't want to start practicing the matchup because I thought it would just always beat Arceus. And then it felt a lot closer in actual practice than I thought it would be. Um, just because, you know, you do have rare candy stuff happening. You, um, mm -hmm. there's a, There are a lot of cards that you want to see at specific times. Like, Super Energy Retrieval is not good when you don't have the energies in your discard pile yet. Um, things like that. <laughs> I mean, I think I think you and you touched on a good point is that you're struggling with the Arceus matchup, presumably because you've got all of that versatility, right? Right. So you're not going for the inherent strength of Chen Pao, and I think that's kind of how you have to build it, and you have to hedge between some flexibility in that. But unfortunately, if you want the deck to be strong and consistent, it loses its flexibility. And if you want it to be flexible, then you lose the consistency and power. Like I was playing a list with Jet Energy. Mm. Um, which sounds weird, or like heavy switch cards, for example. Yeah. And the idea is you, it's hard for you to like boss and KO stuff and like get all the energy you need. But if you already have it on board, it's not as bad. So you try and like use Chen Pao's ability, like 
two to three times a turn at mm -hmm. least um and then just attach all your energy and if they boss your back scalar but you don't care because everything's on the board right um but then in exchange like you said you know your single prize matchups aren't as great yeah <laughs> all that kind of stuff so you got to pick your poison i think it's a little bit too linear um at the moment because gardevoir can just kind of do everything so yeah 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 gardevoir has a ton of options and speaking of gardevoir having options let's um i'm sure you've seen the um short essays that jake gearhart has written on twitter about reversal guardy um mm -hmm. it is a very interesting deck and it's the first deck i sleeved up for paldea evolved testing and started playing with nice. um have you given it any thought yeah, I have. I actually, I was, I was telling Jake this the other day. I was really frustrated because I, and I showed him the timestamp. I had a note on my phone that said, uh, let me read it out. It said, um, reversal energy toolbox, one EX, not much psychic, Mewtwo V Union. <laughs> That's it. That's it, the it formula. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was dated to like two days before the... Um, the tournament in japan yeah and then they played it and i was like damn it man like <laughs> so close this is really you know this is when we need synced formats but um yeah so anyway i think it's i think it's very interesting um i need to test it a little bit more and i think from the looks of things whenever it's lost it seems to be against regular gardevoir mm -hmm. so that seems to be the closest matchup for it if not like the more i'm most unfavored so i think um it pretty cleanly beats everything else so maybe it goes even into some of them but um it's really it's a really strong deck and it's like a cool deck right like the way it plays and i like the whole like you, you using more arch steps if you can and not playing vip with the latest list i think had um and it's cool to be able to set up like checkmates with mewtwo and it's pretty cool yeah yeah i've uh i've played it a good bit it um it doesn't outright beat lost zone boxes and um i actually read the article that one of the pilots from the original tournament wrote and like they talk about the matchup spreads and everything in that mm. and i think like they, they definitely went negative as a group against lost zone boxes and i think they went positive mm. against pretty much every other deck in the tournament um okay so the lost zone box matchup and, and in my testing it's kind of like if if you can get that stability and then you get a turn or two with Mewtwo V Union at the end, then obviously you're just going to clear their board. Um, mm. But it definitely has something to be desired in the uh, first two turns. Actually getting that setup happening is uh, the problem. Yeah. It is a setup deck. And I think that'll well, keep people yeah. away because we haven't had setup decks very much in recent years. <laughs> And and that's what's interesting. I think that Iono, whilst it is very good against Lost Zone, you have to be really careful because I know even the current um, the current matchup against Lost Zone, which I won't go into too much detail, but you actually like often going turn two Gardevoir is actually a bit of a trap. Like the reason that you want to use Zation with three energy is so that you can actually develop your draw engine for a little bit and you get a few because if you break Andy Gardevoir, you lose four cards in hand because mm -hmm. you don't get to Curlier that turn and the next turn. And then you struggle to like evolve into all your stuff and you lose card advantage. But so next format, when you play Iono, even though you cut your opponent's hand down, you also cut your own down. And when Sableye's messing with your engine, sometimes you can actually just run out of things to do against them. Very interesting. So the Zacian, um, you played two Zacian this past weekend? Yeah. Okay. Two. Would you be playing two Zacian still in Paldea Evolve format, do you think? Um, I don't think so. I think the meta changes a bit. Baby Gardevoir gets more value. Right. There's two actually big reasons why. Um, Zacian at the moment is good because obviously it can hit much higher damage, but also it's an attacker, even though it gives up two prizes, it's not part of your draw engine. Mm -hmm. So you're not like giving up one of your Curliers or Gardevoirs when you have you use it in attack, which is a big deal. Um, and how you kind of leverage that to make sure you can draw what you need to end the game. But with Super Odd, you can more like easily replenish your Gardevoir yeah. lines. So it's much easier for you to use Baby Gardevoir with like reversal and stuff. Um, and also, obviously, you can just use Super Rod to reuse the Zacian anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so like you said, Lost City, but still, like, there's not really much of an incentive to play the second Zacian anymore. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel that for sure. And uh, yeah, the, the Shining Arcana Gardevoir is definitely going to get more value because of the reversal energy. But also, like you said, Super Rod. I mean, I feel like this deck was just like missing a few 
cards that it was meant to have and now with Paldea evolved yeah. uh, everything's aligning and the deck is reaching like its true form almost here that's going to be uh what i think is going to be a lot stronger um and you already yeah. showed that it was strong enough in this format so that's very that's interesting. what i mean with the super Rod. i'm almost <laughs> disappointed because it makes it too easy you don't have to manage anything like oh i want to i want to hit two energy off arcana i'll just super run it back oh I, I need my mana fee back you know i need need my ex oh but i can boss because i can super run and boss whereas at the moment you can't like miriam mm -hmm. you know so you got to set it up and it feels like you're working harder but super run it's just you don't need to do anything yeah <laughs> <laughs> so how about uh lost zone so my mm -hmm. biggest question i this is a question that i'm trying to find in my own testing right now is is kyogre still optimal so like currently we see some of the best players some of the best deck, deck builders sticking to kyogre um, and that's because, you know, it, it's super hard to play, but if they didn't believe it was the way to play Lost Zone, they wouldn't be playing it because of how hard it is mm. to play. Does that still ring true in the Paldea Evolve format? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I mean, I'm not, like, the biggest Lost Zone enthusiast. Like, I have not put anywhere near as much time and thought into it as, um, you know, all of them have. But, you know... I think it is still very good. There's like Kyogre doesn't really suddenly get bad. Like it, doing 250 to two Pokemon is pretty insane. Always. Um, I think it's very good. I think Iono is a big deal. I don't know how that's going to interact in terms of getting the Kyogre out because like obviously they're going to kill your hand size more often. Things go to the bottom. So it is a big detriment. Um, I can't remember if the Japanese list was still playing it or not. So the third um, place list Jet from Energy Nigata. Uh, the third place list from Nigata, the Turbo Zone, did not play Kyogre. Mm -hmm um okay um so that and then there oh, was also yeah. the ninth place list from nigata that was strictly single prizers and that did play kyogre um mm -hmm. but yeah the turbo zone lists with the stones have been it looks like they've been not including kyogre okay yeah i mean it's interesting i think that jet energy is very good for lost zone mm -hmm um it just reduced the amount of cards you need by a fair bit and like if you're playing snorlax it's more easy to like utilize it as opposed to a deck with like too many colored requirements um i think it's i think it's good still lost zone i just don't know how it's going to interact fully with iono yeah um and for like from when i've been playing against gardevoir it's still like the matchup feels the same essentially mm. like iono is good but still probably about 50 50. so on the topic of lost zone uh lost zone giratina i um mm -hmm. i'm a fan of lost zone giratina i just enjoy how the deck plays and uh it didn't do too well in our scarlet and violet format now japan played a very similar scarlet and violet format to us except they had jet energy uh they've had mm -hmm. jet energy for months at this point yeah. and how big of a deal was that in Giratina being the second most popular deck and very successful in Japan to being almost a rogue deck over here? It's a big deal. Um, it makes the Kramer and Termon much easier, but also it makes um, Abyss Seeking even easier in like the Lost Zone Mirror, which is a big deal because you can choose to go second. I mean, even against Gardevoir, you can probably do this, but you can choose to go second, Abyss Seeking, and then you're like really close to getting your... Um, excuse me, you're like turn to um, Sableye or turn to Giratina or something like that. And it has a more efficient way to deal with Gardevoir EX than most Lost Zone decks. So like you can boss and take two prizes more easily and more comfortably. So I think, and now the uh, Giratina lists are playing Path as well. So they try and go like Roxanne Path and they can more effectively deal with the draw engine from Gardevoir. So the Path is more effective. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the Jet is a really big deal. But I think Giratina still didn't see very much success in the Champions Leagues, regardless of its play at City Leagues. Yeah, so, it, so um, in the first city, that. actually in the first City League, uh, it's, I'm sorry, Champions League Nagata, uh, where the Reversal Guardy mm -hmm. kind of premiered at, um, it had four top sixteen placements, and that was a twenty. Good. That was a twenty hundred person event. Um, yeah, so I think now it's with Path, it's it's getting a little bit better. Right. But okay. Obviously, yeah, yeah. it wasn't doing as well. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. now with now it has Iono, it has Super Rod, 
um it has and it now super has rod, energy as well yeah super rods also yeah. pretty important for the deck because like playing clara and energy recycler or playing just one of them it, it was very awkward <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Not good. laughs> um and then artisan some of the lists do play artisan as well and uh artisan yeah. actually helps mm. out a lot of decks gardevoir and lost zone mm. Yeah, Artisan's pretty good. I think that you got to be careful when you give it to your opponent, obviously, but it's a nice stadium to be playing. And with Jet Energy, you don't need Beach Court as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, Beach Court is a little bit overrated anyway, um, but it's quite it's quite good. So um, another deck that has popped up a lot in North America, and um, or in the Western events, I should say, and now I've also seen it over in Japanese events, is the Arceus Duraludon Umbreon deck, Henry. Yeah. Now, nice. it yeah. looks like a pile, sure. Yeah. But its yeah. matchup spread is pretty good looking. So tell me what you think about this deck. I'm interested. I think it's really cool. I think it's cool. I think um I had... I'm going to say this, uh, this happened again, but I was playing Arceus Umbreon for a while, but the I couldn't figure out a way to beat Lugia that wasn't Duraludon, and I didn't want to play Duraludon. I just didn't want to. Nice. So I was like, there's no way I'm playing a Duraludon to an event. So right. I, I dropped it. But it's it's cool because like you're more consistent in terms of what you can do power-wise because of Umbreon's ability. Um, it's dark type, which is really good. Mm -hmm. Um the Kazam is really awesome. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I didn't have Kazam, but it was really it's really cool and it makes the Gardevoir match matchup really interesting. Um and obviously you can do stuff against Dragonite, it's pretty cool as well. Um, I think it's a good deck. I think it's a really good deck. I don't know how it'll fare going forward um, with like Iono and stuff, but I can't imagine it would completely disappear off the face of the earth. I just think it's Chen Power matchup is probably less than ideal. Mm -hmm. I've been testing it. I I'll just I'll just put out there what I'm testing yeah. right now. And it's one of the decks that have impressed me a lot in Paldea Evolve format. Um, it doesn't really need too many changes. You can add Iono to it if you want. You can add the new Spirit Tomb, maybe the Squawk Ability as well, if you want to try out some of those mm. cards. Um, I like it. I mean, I know you said Chi and Pal could be a problem, but you also have the potential to go judge and umbreon on the second turn you know knock out there whatever you want to knock out whether it's a palky of v if you have the halucha kazam combo or if you want to knock out the palky of v. <laughs> if you want to knock out the frigibax um mm. i i don't know i think arc dur umbreon is still really really good yeah, I think it's a cool deck. I think it's a cool deck. It's still an arc pile, but as right. far as they go, it's as far as they go, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so Palky of V, do you not like Palky of V in Chi and Pal decks? Um, not really. I think like maybe it's necessary, but I was like, I just kind of feel like if I have to play Palky and Chen Pal, like surely I could just be playing a better deck. Like mm -hmm. it feels like if you have to put the Palky line in, it's just not great, and it's already it's like. Weak to it's weak to Luxray, which like is a new important card, so mm. it just gets beaten by that. Like it's um it's like it's irresearchable, but I don't know. I'd rather not have to play Palkia. I think makes sense. Yeah, I um, yeah. it's it's the version I've been trying out, and the Palkia is good sometimes. It's also four cards in the deck that could be helping me play the game better sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah big time so luxray luxray from the new set um you yeah. can play it down if you're behind on prizes uh it goes very well with reversal energy uh we've seen from japan it's being included in straight guardy reversal guardy lugia some lost zone decks um it's in the Lost Zone decks, I think, for flying pikachu almost entirely from what i can tell yeah because I haven't really wanted to use it against Lugia too much when I have Sky Seal Stone Raikou in the deck, um, but it still can mm -hmm. be good for Lugia, but it, it requires a whole attachment Mirage Gate or Raihan Mirage Gate if you're not playing reversals, and it kind of feels like a lot to put onto that Pokemon sometimes. Um, but yeah, first, so I think it's for the Flying Pikachu in the Lost Zone decks first and foremost, and yeah. that seems like something that happened due to the meta development over there. Like, I don't think 
they just said, oh, we'll put in Luxray in case people show up with Flying Pikachu. There's probably Flying Pikachu all over their city leagues and all over the forums yeah. and everything that caused that to happen. So what is always really interesting and also frustrating to figure out is where in that wheel are we jumping in in the western format mm. yeah I, I think luxury is just a really good card in general especially if you play reversal it's cool to be able to counter flank and pikachu easily but i just think they're designing so many like interesting cards yeah like it's cool to just be able to drop a luxray out of nowhere <laughs> yeah and it's a very efficient attacker like it's really good um I mean, I already think we're in probably the best format we've played since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, like, easily. Like, it's just awesome. Like, I mean, obviously, this isn't specifically about the Luxray, but, like, every matchup feels close. You can play whatever deck you want and still win. Like, you're not locked into, like, you have to play this to win. Yeah. Um, you, you can, like, beat every matchup if you, like, play really well and, you know, you play better. Um, but and now they're making really cool cards like Luxray, so I'm stoked. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of at a point where, like most all, my entire life playing pokemon aside from uh cosmic eclipse through battle styles maybe in that <laughs> chunk of time i was distracted from enjoying the game by how much i hated the game but um yeah. now i'm back to my normal okay let's play pokemon <laughs> like i could just enjoy the game yeah, yeah. and let the designers do what they're doing i don't have to worry about it but like there was a point in the pandemic where it was like i'm either quitting or i'm writing a petition to creatures inc like I, there's <laughs> i mean me too like i um i didn't play two of our australian regionals this year because i decided like if i'm not excited about playing the tournament mm -hmm. i don't want to do it mm -hmm. because i'm just not going to do it as well because i don't really want to and there's no reason to just like force myself to do it even if it's like bad for like you know the day two race and all of that stuff um i didn't enjoy the lugia format that much didn't play them and then i really enjoyed the next one i was like you know what i'm gonna book an extremely expensive plane ticket to america <laughs> um and it's a just play their tournaments because we didn't have any of this format in, in art. So I was like, let's do it. Yeah. And I did it. And it's been fun. So I'm sure I'm doing much better now because I'm enjoying it mm -hmm. than I would have otherwise. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, Pokemon, when you're competing and when, you know, you're in the day two race and you have sponsors and, you know, you're a top player, coach, everything, it can feel like a job. And that's okay. Like, yeah. if you're making, like, it's great. Like, the dream is to, you know, be able to make some sort of a living off of something you love, right? But uh, you have to also keep that love at the awesome. forefront and the, the fun at the forefront of it. Lugia feels like it's still frustratingly good. Um, how, What do you think about Lugia and the Paldea Evolved? Um, I mean, I think that deck was lame when it was released. I think it's lame now, and I think it's still going to be lame, but mm -hmm. it's still strong. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I mean, it's good. Like, I think it gets a little bit better. Jet energy is awesome for it because it actually makes the deck more consistent. Like, if you don't open Lugia, you can still read the wind. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. Um, the colorless Lugia is really cool, and it's, like, a much nicer deck than, I guess, the single strike one would be to play. But from what I can gather, it still seems like single strike is better. Yeah. Single strike um, just has more I answers to played, things. Yeah. Higher base power level. Um, so I'm trying to do fancy stuff, I guess. Um, but Lugia loses a lot of its weaknesses. So jet energy unit means it now has switch cards. Aroma means it's immune to status effects if it were to play them. Um, so that's a lot better. Uh, although I think Lugia does drop slightly in consistency because of spirit tomb. So it depends on how widely played it is. But Lugia can't play Luminion it's definitely going to brick like maybe a turn more than it usually would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm often like when I am on Lugia duty and testing, I am using Lumidion a lot on the first two turns of the game. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. So colorless Lugia, I, I, I agree fully. This is, it's exactly what I've been saying is that colorless Lugia looks like a deck that I would mind playing much less than I would mind playing single strike Lugia. Because single strike sure. Lugia just really just I don't know man it, it it's not fun it's not interactive I I don't there, there's really not a lot of decisions to make like if if you're at a base level of skill for Pokemon the decision's always right in front of you what you have to do with single strike Lugia um, there's not much nuance hmm. um, and with colorless Lugia maybe 
will also be like that, but it's new. So there's at least some things to figure out. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. This has been a great talk. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the channel. So why don't we wrap it up with a couple things that people might want to hear about um, for Fresno. So we're just going to assume you're playing Gardevoir, but um, what what are your picks for the decks that will do well? Is it just going to be Gardevoir Lugia Lost Zone, mm -hmm. or are people still trying new things? Um, I mean, I'm interested to see if Guardi will increase in play or not, because um, it's still tricky and people still might not feel comfortable in it. Um, which is interesting. So I'm not I'm not sure about that. Uh, especially with the Lost Zone going up. I saw that Stefan played Espion V Max mm -hmm. in uh, Torino. So people might try that to have a better Lost Zone matchup, which definitely helps. It's just, you know, it tanks your matchups a little bit. I'd imagine the Garda will be will be more respected though. So, you know, probably the same amount of Lost Zone, but Arctina might put cleansing gloves back in, same with Mew. Um, I'd still expect a really strong showing from Lost Zone, maybe a slightly higher play percentage for Gardevoir, but also still the the same well-performing probably Mew and Arctina decks. Cool. And then uh, for NAIC, what do you think will be kind of the day one percentage all the way out? You know, we're at the beginning of June kind of right now, so mm. we're three weeks away. Wow, three weeks away from NAIC already. <laughs> um what do you think the meta percentages will be like for maybe all the decks like eight percent and higher mm, i think we might see close to 20 percent for gardevoir i think it overtakes lost zone um 100 I, I would expect it to overtake lost zone i think that we'll see probably lost zone at second mm -hmm. and then arceus and chen pao are probably close together because chen pao is a very like physically fun deck mm -hmm. in terms of the like actions you take not in like a cerebral gameplay thing but in terms of like i've got five energy in my hand yeah <laughs> you just like slam them on right kind of like god above but like a bit different and it's people like that and it's very fun sure um gets your blood rushing so i think i think just because of that it'll be high highly played and then NZ uh how about well. mew and lugia um i think mew will probably drop off a lot because of tomb and Lugia will still probably see play, but maybe at a reduced level. Yeah, because um, you got to think, think like, how people uh, these people matchups. picking up Chi and Pal, the people uh, that weren't playing Guardi that recognize, okay, Guardi's a lot better now, so that means I don't have to be as good at it. More people picking up that. Um, like, these mm. people have to be coming from some other archetype, right? <laughs> so, like, what yeah. archetypes are they dropping? And it's probably Lugia and Mew. <laughs> it's probably Lugia, yeah. I think also the other thing that's, um, maybe might see a bit of play is um Ting Lul or Ting Lu. Um, Ting Lu. I have I'm shuffling it right now. I don't think it's <laughs> I don't think it's very good. It's cool. Cool deck. It is cool. I don't think it can ever beat Gardevoir if they like, you know, no. have hands, mm -mm. but no or but... you know, someone to play the cards for them at least. But um it's it's really rough. But I mean, also, I think it, it loses to some other stuff, but... It's great against Lost Zone. It's cool people like ability lock, so... Yeah, it's... It is pretty good against Lost Zone, and people do hate Lost Zone, so... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a real shame about the Gardevoir matchup. I haven't even played the Gardevoir matchup, but I've I've played the Gardevoir matchup in my head, and it never goes well for Ting Lu. <laughs> Ting Lu can literally be, like, locking you for, like, four turns, because it three-shots Gardevoir. Mm -hmm. You can then just, like, slam Cresselia, retreat into it, attach and like now you have all of your abilities again yeah yeah and it's like it's just so one -sided. and then ting it's... lu uh is on top deck mode after turn two and gardevoir has its whole deck in its hand so yeah i mean you turn off the curlies and you turn off the greninja but they're coming back on eventually yeah yeah that's an interesting one for sure i think it's uh unfortunately just going to be chalked up as a fun deck but it's cool it's cool i like the ability lock but if it was a little bit better it might have been too good so yeah i think it just should have turned off the x's i think that would have been fine either way i think people will still play it because it's fun yeah so. yeah for sure well henry best of luck at fresno you know we're going on this uh north american circuit for you right now from milwaukee to fresno to naac we'll see if you can get the three p uh just win all three you know that would be amazing henry brand's uh awesome trip to america 
win a few we'll major really events. Funny, but we'll, we'll, <laughs> I'm happy with one. If I get even just points at the next, we'll, we'll be happy. But awesome. We'll see how we awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll be rooting for you. Um, and Thanks, uh, I'll look forward to seeing you at NAIC. Do you have any uh, shouts before we head out for the video? Really, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, I imagine the link will be in the description uh, at um, Benry TCG. Uh, I don't really stream on Twitch terribly often, but you can give it a follow there. And I do do coaching as well, uh, but not probably until after any I say. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So follow you on Twitter, message you there about coaching, and uh, yeah. learn from the best. All right, man. Thank you so much yeah. for being on.